Hello, welcome to CIS Conference 2020. My name is Nana Benyi Ansa from the Department of Construction Technology and Management, College of Art and Built Environment, KNUST, Kumasi, Ghana. Presenting on behalf of the artists on the topic, bibliometric study on particle emissions of natural and alternative building materials. Emission reduction strategies are important in reducing health challenges that arise from pollution. And the construction markets are now more conscious of sustainable development. As a result, if you are looking at natural and alternative building material emissions, then we are saying that when these materials are used, they pollute the environment, leading to high sustainability challenges. And these sustainability challenges lead to health challenges to those who use the materials in question. Now, there is a large construction activities going on worldwide. And because of that, we have a lot of construction materials also on the market. Most of these materials are legally accepted, yet they contain some form of toxicity. And this was exposed by Pacheco, Togal, and Jalali in 2011 in their study. And the difficulty in determining the pattern of toxicity has led to the use of several toxic materials on the construction market. And uh, these toxins are emitted from the materials to the atmosphere. So there's the need for environmental assessment of building materials when there is a construction project as proposed by Farazadi et al. in 2016. So therefore, the aim of this study was to conduct a structured literature review on the subject of particle emissions of natural and alternative building materials and to provide an overview of the associated health challenges. So the methodology or the search strategy was that because it was um, a literature review, a general literature search was made through databases. And the database was sorted using Science Direct, Google Scholar, Research Gates, MDPI, and Journal for Cleaner Productions. And uh, 127 journal articles, published and unpublished articles, industry research reports, industry letters, and so on were obtained. And these 127 were filtered to obtain 111 relevant research documents. Again, these 111 were researched, were filtered, as you say, and after filtering, 57 were obtained as being relevant. Now, the 57 were also gone through, and uh, we obtained seven that were most relevant to the study. And these seven were couched as frontline literature. And from this, we obtained natural material emission factors and uh, alternative material emission factors, leading to their health implications. So in 2003, Moulton Patterson et al. carried out a research on building products or building materials. And uh, they said that materials with low or no research content could be termed as natural materials. Ruska and Hakenin in 2014 also did the same. And they also found that natural materials are found to be renewable or non-renewable renewable materials. They gave example of natural materials as aluminum, frames, polystyrene, thermal insulation, standard bricks, and air-filled double glazed windows. This was given by Farazadi et al. in their study in 2016. Now, Moulton Patterson et al. in 2003 in their study also found out that materials with rapidly renewable content or containing no or low volatile organic compounds are also to be termed alternative materials. In the same way, Farazadi et al. also established that these materials were alternative construction materials and they include clay blocks, glass wool, thermal insulation, acrylic paint, wooden frames, and argon-filled double glazed windows. Now, how do we select these natural and alternative building materials? Koshinava et al. in 2018 concluded that 
when we are selecting building materials, we have to look at the quality, the performance, the beauty, and the cost in order to be able to bring out the serviceability functions. Now, if you're able to bring out the serviceability functions, it will mean that we'll be able to know how the materials must be used and reused. In doing so, we look at the durability of the material and the efficiency of the material. And if the material is to be used and reused again, it was proposed by Herwich et al. in 2019 that it will reduce the environmental pollution of this material because it will curtail or prevent the material from going through extraction to the processing criteria. So if you want to use this material, you don't go back to extraction through to process, processing. But what you do is that you just use the material again and again in their lifetime. And by so doing, you have to employ life cycle assessment. And it has been found that life cycle assessment is very difficult in its um, methodology. But then it is most significant because it is very useful in selecting efficient building materials. So the global burden of disease reported in 2015 that air pollution is the fifth ranked mortality factor. And these natural and uh, alternative materials have been found to emit substances that pollute the air. Therefore, they are also part of the mortality burden rate in the construction industry. And uh, when we use durable materials, it's found by Levin in 2016 that it increases the efficiency of the material. And when the efficiency of the materials is increased, it means that the material could be used and reused again. And when we do that, it impacts positively on the human health because it will reduce pollution because the extraction to processing of the material looking at life cycle will not be there. Therefore, this study has looked at built environment professionals being able to select materials, but they lack the clue of knowing about the toxicity of building materials. Literature has also been quiet in, on the emissions of PM10 and PM2.5 released from the use of both natural and alternative materials throughout the study conducted. And the study has also been limited because to ascertain a more in-depth theoretical account, detailed analysis and discovery are paramount to bring forward the boundary of emissions between natural and alternative materials. Uh, therefore, there's a significant research direction required towards the study of this phenomenon so that we'll be able to analyze the health complexities accompanying the use of these construction materials. And some of the health complexities have been found that um, human beings or people spend about 40% of their time indoors. And during, during, during this COVID era, it is very important that this study is carried out so that we will be able to find how material usage pollutes the environment, thereby impacting on the human health. Thank you very much for listening and your attention. Thank you.